Happy New Year, everybody. And I hope that 2018 has got off to a spectacular start for you all. Wherever you're tuning in from, I hope that you're having a lovely day, a lovely week, and certainly, as I say, starting a wonderful year. Now, today I am going to share with you a book review of this book uh, called Star. You can't see it there with my microphone. And I invite you to have a cup of coffee with me while we have a chat about this, okay? Uh, two of my favorite things, books and coffee, really are. Now, the reason I picked this book is because, did you ever, you know, did you ever see an SME owner and they look just completely composed? They're on top of everything, they know their strategic objectives, they know their value proposition, their sales books are full, and you're looking at them wondering, you know, what are you doing? Or more importantly, what am I doing wrong? Because I know how that feels. Or did you ever, you know, one day walk into your office of a theoretical sort, and whether that office could be a an actual four walls of an office like where I am. Actually, sorry, I meant to tell you, I'm joining you today from the boardroom in our own office here at Invent ECU. And the, your office could be your mobile, it could be a coffee shop, it could be uh, wherever it might be. And did you ever, you know, look at your inbox and you think, that is blowing smoke. I probably have loads to do there. And you look at your phone and then you think, okay, well, I could be tweeting and I could be putting things on Facebook. And then you get an invite to go to an event. You think I could be going to that. And then you think, well, I didn't actually follow up from everything that I did last month. And then you watch a YouTube video and you see somebody who is really inspirational and they say that you should take a day off and just journal. And you think, you know what? No one ever trained me for this. Like, I actually don't know exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. And uh, and I'm not quite sure how to get to the point of where I get to that completely composed SME owner. Or, right, and this is another one. I've often experienced this and spoken to people who've experienced this. And this is where you get to where you want to go. So you might say, okay, I would actually love if everybody just took care of customers and where I had the time to think and strategize and actually put real business new plans in place and implemented them and thought big dreams and then from there I could pursue them and that everybody else could look after the urgent while I take care of the important. And then you get to that point and then it's awfully scary because of course at that point other people are taking care of the other things and the other areas and then you're supposed to come up with these visionary ideas and pursue them and make them a success and everything else like that. And then it's kind of a little bit scary when you're there and you just wish you could go back to the safety zone of having, you know, a blowing smoke email inbox because you can get a sense of achievement out of that. Well, each and all of those I've been through, okay? Each and every single one of those. And this is why I'm telling you about this book is because Star, sorry, I know it's just, you know, my video works backwards. Star, Leadership Behaviors for Stellar SME Growth. Um, this book codifies what those things that you need to do actually are. That is what this book does. Um, it was written by Will and John McKee. Now, I have never met them, um, but I have reached out to John on LinkedIn. Uh, he They, they uh, set up a company called Linkubator. It's based in Belfast, and it's a consultancy for dealing with SMEs. And I have also found out that Will actually uh, was John's dad and he sadly passed on. So it's now Will and, sorry, John and a number of colleagues who actually run the business. So I, I've reached out to them uh, and I've told them exactly what I thought of the book. And um, for me, this book is a really worthwhile read. Now, I came across it actually at an event. I was at an event that was being run by Small Business Can, um, which is a CSR project of uh, Ulster Bank. And actually, I see that Ulster Bank is on the back of the book and supporting it. And anyway, they were giving away free copies of this book one day at, at an event. And I thought, hmm, must take that home. Now, I must say, it was at home in the press for I don't know how long. And then when it came to my leadership assignment for my master's, that was the time that I said, you know what, actually, I should take this out and I should have a look at it because I needed a leadership model. But the thing about a lot of leadership models is that they pertain specifically to companies that are really, really big or that have lots of staff or we can take the, you know, a week out just to stop and think and reflect and everything is fine. Now, I did that for the first time ever actually last year on foot of uh, something else that I'd read to great effect. Uh, but you can't do that all the time. And, and even I have to say I was seven years of business by the time I could actually get to, to that point. Anyway. 
You don't need to know any of that. What you do need to know is why I read it and why I'm talking about it, talking about you today. The reason that I particularly looked at this book for that assignment was that I would like to read something that is nebulous. The thing about leadership, a lot of leadership reading is that it's fantastic and it's very interesting and it's insightful. And there's very little you can do about it because it is insightfully academic or it pertains to, again, taking lots of months off with lots of staff off site and costing a fortune to think about how to do things better. This book was written by people who are A, at the cold face, and B, deal with people all the time who are at the cold face. It is packed full of stories. Uh, tiny, short, sharp anecdotes that underscore a point. So it, And also, the other thing I should mention, many of the stories are about companies, SMEs, in Northern Ireland and, uh, and Ireland. So it's very local. Um, the stories are like, you basically could step into the shoes of any one of them. And, and that's what makes this book really, really real. But it's very, very practical. So three things I want to tell you about this book. And before I do, I want to tell you who you might be if you would find this useful. If you are going to be or are an SME and you want to grow. And what I mean by grow is you want to get, let's say, to a point. Now, I'm these are my numbers, okay? This isn't what necessarily the guys say this, but in my opinion, if you want to grow to, let's say, 10 staff plus and a couple of million in turnover, that is where this book is super useful. Now, if you are a one man or a woman band, certainly it will be very useful, but just not as useful as if in the case, let's say you might be t taking on staff or really putting together budgets of a quite a significant size or where you can develop your own value chain and so on. Okay, so from that point of view, I would say if you're in that space, I know that's a cliche these days, isn't it? I hear space all the time. But uh, if you are in that space, if you are in that kind of 10 staff plus and couple of million, that couple, whatever that number, I know it's typically two, but around that area plus, uh, this book, I have to say, is well worth your while. I also would say if you're ambitious to get to that point, you can read this early enough. I mean, it, you can't read this early enough. You, it's very, very important to live and build your company as you want it to be, not as it is. So therefore, reading about how your role models, if that's what you want to call them, are running their company, that can be very, very useful. Now, my favorite thing out of this book is at the end, of course. And that is, now I hope you can see this now on the camera, but here at the very, very end, right? Uh, and the whole book is dedicated to it. I'm just trying to get this for you here. Can we get this positioned right? There is a diagnostic, okay? And the diagnostic looks at five different pieces, five different types of leadership style. So you have the visionary leader, you have the team leader, you have the seller leader, you have the manager leader, and you have the innovator leader. And basically what this book is dedicated to is the 20 behaviors, and that's key. It's not skills, it's not characteristics, and it's not anything else that you can put your finger on. It is 20 behaviors that each type of those leaders excel at in order to be the leader of that type, okay? Now, initially, right, when you start reading this, it, it's great. And you say, you know, yes, I'm that, and I can work on that, and um, certainly I can pursue that. So one of the behaviors, right, I've just randomly open, opened a page here, right, and one of the behaviors in the visionary leadership style is that you set ambitious goals. Check, yep. Uh, that you spot opportunities, yep, done that too. Uh, plans methodically, I do, and after reading this book, I do a lot more of it. But when I read it first, I thought, um, okay. Uh, researchers meticulously, and I looked at that and said, I don't have time for that. I have to go and execute it, implement it. Who's going to pay the staff's bill next week, you know? Um, and then builds new concepts. And I'd say, yeah, I've done that, and that's a work in progress. But the thing is, right, that's the first five. But then anyway, you start getting on and moving on from there. And then what you realize actually is that there is a hundred behaviors in here. And by the time you get to about 23, you think, oh my good God, oh my good God, I actually now see how I have been feeling this way because I'm supposed to be doing all these things. And this book is telling me that I should be doing them all in order to be a stellar SME. How am I gonna manage that? But then you see, and this is the point that I wanted to pick out with you, is that that diagnostic is there. And I have used that diagnostic many times, right? So I, I look at the back of the book and I look at the diagnostic and I see how I'm doing. And then what I do is I go to the, particularly I look at the gaps and I see what I'm not excelling at. Now for me, a gap isn't where I am not practicing that behavior. It's where I'm not practicing that behavior optimally, of which I can't, not a hundred of them, all the time. I could possibly. And then what I did, right, was then I rang Ardell, my husband and business partner. 
Um, you might say, why did I ring him? If he's my husband, surely he should be there. But anyway, he wasn't that particular day, right? So I rang him and I went through the same diagnostic with him. And I said, don't think, just answer me. I said, just don't be thinking too much about this. So what I did was that when I put the two of us together, I actually realized we had an awful lot of these behaviors together. Now, that was that time. As those of you who've looked at my book reviews before will know, I don't just read a book, put it down and then turn on the camera. I, I, have, I read this book for the first time properly, anyway, uh, at the end of 2015. Okay, so like that's when I have been practicing this since then. All sorry, not 2015, 2016. Sorry, so I've been practicing this all of all of last year. And uh, so anyway, as I say, ran the diagnostic anyway, ran it with the two of us, and then I realized, okay, a lot of the gaps that I have uh, of a of like an excellent four or five out of five type of level he has, and that was fine at that stage, right? So, but then as time has gone on, the company has changed and it's deepened and it's widened and it's you know some of the boundaries of it have become a little bit more blurry because we've partnered with other people or because we've taken people on in the liquid workforce and so on like that. So the thing is, what this book has enabled me to do is actually run the diagnostic per team. So when I look at our team uh, based on whatever project that we're working on, that is actually how I use this diagnostic. So it's no longer just about me or just about me and Ardell or Ardell and I to be precise. Um, it's actually about how how can I make sure that my leadership team for my SME projects are complete or at least as optimal as, as they can be or at the very, very least, um, what can I look for in the team so that I can spot what isn't there and then subsequently fill it, okay? So that's the first thing I want to point out to you is that this diagnostic is very, very useful for you, but actually if you do it with your team, particularly the people involved in leading the team or leading aspects of the team. Now, the other thing that I want to tell you as well is that um, it's actually interesting how as an SME leader, I mean, we don't have an awful lot of people in the company who can just be one particular leader or one specific this or one specific that. So what I find actually is that I need to be a different type of leader at different times of the day, different times of the week, different stages of a project, um, different stages of do various different projects, etc. So I'll just give you an example, right? This morning I was leading a meeting of our uh, of a group of people, the key, the core team of one particular project that is quite innovative. Okay, so I had to lead that project this morning. Now my leadership style this morning needed to be visionary because we've just met our first milestone. So I need now to be visionary and see what the second and subsequent milestones are and work backwards. That was this morning. Okay, now. On Friday, I'm going on a trade mission to Hong Kong. And from there, that is solely about being a research gatherer and seller type of leader, where I'm building relationships with potential collaborators, suppliers, customers, influencers, etc. So I'd, I'd be doing that, right? So that's the seller leader to type in me. And at the same time, I need to be research gathering at, this, at, at the same time. So it's a different style of leadership. Now, for about the last quarter of last year, we took on a number of people in differing roles. So therefore, I needed to be the people, the, the team leader, manager. Um, all the time, I need to be a manager. I need to be a manager in terms of resources and outputs and wages and budgets and targets and getting things done and implementation. I, I need to do that a lot. Now, specifically, though, the VAT return is due in two weeks' time and the 23rd of January to be specific. And the, the the tax deadlines and accounting deadlines that I have, I have actually used those as my hard goals around my accounting cycles as well. And my accounting cycles lead me to look at my management KPIs and my financial KPIs, etc. And that's when I need to be the manager. Now, throughout, in between the start of this project that I'm currently working on, which had a big lead in time before that in the preparation phase, to the board meeting today, in that case, what I needed to be was I needed to be an innovator leader, an innovator leader, was that there I needed to look at novel concepts, I needed to challenge the assumptions, I needed to look at ways in which we could do things better, cheaper, faster, more efficient, leveraging technology and so on. So the thing is, as an SME leader, it's not that I have a head of innovation, right? I'd love one. I'd love to have a head of innovation. And in time, all going well, we will. But the point is, is that you do need to be a different type of leader in different days, in different scenarios, and in leading different teams. And of course, all of that assumes things go to plan, which doesn't quite ever, no, I won't say ever happen. That's exaggerating. But it, it doesn't happen all the time. OK, so in that context, you also need to be the leader. One of the characteristics in here is that the SME leader needs to be able to handle ambiguity. 
Yeah, I agree with that one. Now, the other thing I want to tell you, though, is, and this is what has happened to me as I've, as I've examined this book over time, is that the words mean different things at different stages. So, for example, one of the characteristics, right, the behaviours of the seller leader is that you need to be a busy networker. Now, many of you on this page will know, right, it's here in the seller leader diagnostic, okay? So, many of you will know now that over the years I have been to far more than my share of networking events and I really do enjoy it. And you'll also know, many of you, that I speak at a lot of events and therefore I get to de facto network with people as well. But I will say that my networking has changed over the years. It changes if you're trying to explore a new market. It changes if you are, like I did, make a decision to change the strategy of your networking. Um, I've told the story countless times, countless, countless times, that in 2014, my New Year's resolution that year was to network within my network. Okay, so not to try and expand it, but to deepen it. And, and that year marked a very, very um, notable change in my network. Uh, about two years later, I decided to change my networking from going to many events and meeting many people to, uh, and specifically when I was saying meeting many people, as in, and deepening my network uh, uh, almost concurrently. I'm not making a whole lot of sense there, but that's for another Facebook Live. But about two years later, what I decided to do was actually focus my networking and not on one to many, but one to one or one to two. And uh, and now my networking has changed again. So the thing is, is that that particular one, uh, since even since I started reading the book, being a busy networker, which is what you need to be to be as a seller leader, has changed and changed quite considerably. Now, another one over here, for example, is ruthless cost cut, and that's in the manager leader. Um, Yes, I can see how I would need to do that for some of our businesses, but for other businesses, it's it's not the right thing. It would be it would be short sighted to do that, particularly in this new project that we're working on. If our focus was to cost cut, as to, to as opposed to build an optimal product at this stage, it wouldn't be the right thing to do. So you also need to be able to make calls like that, and 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 throughout, right throughout this book, right throughout reading this book. Uh, and reading it again and um, and thoroughly enjoying the stories again and looking through a different lens, but particularly using that diagnostic. That diagnostic is super, super, super useful. And what I have seen is that is that the nature of it changes. It changes quite a lot. The nature of what you need to do changes quite a lot. Even as I say, the words have different connotations and meaning to you as, as you go on. So on that note, what I'm going to do is that I'm going to say uh, to John uh, McKee, thank you very much indeed for writing this book, it's an excellent resource for practical businesses. If you are, as I say, if you are, have that feeling where you're just not quite sure, you know, what exactly am I supposed to be doing? Because nobody really trained me to do this. Or you're thinking, how can I get a handle on this? How can I get to a stage where I move away from the urgent and I focus on the important and really build behaviors like proper behaviors to, to do that? I have to say, this book has been very helpful for me. But also, and, and I really do want to, I know I've said it already, but I just want to, you know, make the point again that when we're talking about leadership in an SME even though you may not have a leadership team per se you not may, you might not have a CFO and a C this and a C that it's not the point it's about who actually takes care of those particular activities who takes care of the sales and the innovation and the management and so on and they may not have nice titles um, and in fact they might, may not be very senior uh, and there may not be very many of them but that's not the point it's about do you are they're people pursuing these behaviors regularly, consistently, and optimally in your company. And if they're not, how do you bring them in in such a way that's affordable, consistent, sustainable, and so on? So as I say, I recommend this book. Uh, I really do. I really do recommend if you are an SME leader that you want to grow, I, I really do recommend this book. Uh, it's called, as I say, Star Leadership Behaviors for Stellar SME Growth. It's a hugely useful, practical read. And if you are that type of SME leader, that's that's the place to go. So on that note, from uh, what is now becoming a rather uh, dark <laughs> at this stage in dusky Dublin, um, from our offices here at Invent ECU, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, there will be another book review next month. I know exactly what it's going to be. And again, like every other one that I've done for you, I've read it months ago and the wheels have been turning throughout. So as I say, from the Hayes Culleton Group to you, from me, Susan Hayes, The Positive Economist, I wish you and yours the very best for 2018, and I'll see you again soon. Thank you. Bye.